In the eerie quiet of the Honey Island Swamp, as the night deepens, a haunting cry echoes through the tangled trees, marking the presence of a creature that strikes fear into the hearts of those who know of it. This enigmatic being, infamous for its ability to swiftly dispatch wild boars and dismantle sturdy hunting camps with ease, embodies the primal dangers that lurk within the swamp's murky depths, ever ready to pounce on unsuspecting prey. The legends surrounding the Honey Island Swamp Monster trace back to ancient Native American tales, weaving a narrative of a colossal entity that prowls the marshlands with a hunger that knows no bounds. However, it was in the modern era, specifically in 1963, that documented encounters with this elusive creature began to surface. It was during this time that two FAA air traffic controlmen, alongside local outdoorsmen, ventured deep into the heart of the swamp, setting up camp amidst the sprawling 70,000 acres of wilderness. As the night enveloped their camp, strange sounds and unsettling movements hinted at the presence of something not quite human. The air grew heavy with tension, and the flickering shadows seemed to dance with unseen life. Suddenly, a spine-chilling cry shattered the stillness, sending shivers down the spines of the campers. What followed was a harrowing night of survival, where every rustle of leaves and every distant splash of water seemed to herald the approach of the legendary Honey Island Swamp Monster. Harlan Ford and his companion Billy D. Mills Sr. discovered a promising spot for a campsite during a flight over a secluded section of the swamp near Slidell, Louisiana. Dana Holyfield, Ford's granddaughter and a supporter of the Swamp Monster Theory, explained that the area was perfect for hunting and rarely visited by humans. Ford, after retiring, devoted much of his time at this campsite to observing wildlife and eventually began documenting sightings of the creature known as the Honey Island Swamp Monster. In the 1970s, Harlan Ford made a notable appearance on the television series In Search Of, where he vividly recounted encountering a mysterious creature, describing it as an untamed giant standing over seven feet tall Ford painted a picture of a beast draped in coarse black hair from head to toe, its intense amber eyes peering out from a face eerily reminiscent of a human's. He recalled his initial confusion, mistaking the creature for a bear until it turned around, revealing its distinctly non-bear-like features. Ford's narrative didn't end with words alone. He brought physical evidence to support his account, a plaster cast of a footprint left by the creature. The impression depicted a foot that defied conventional categorization, possessing four toes and webbing reminiscent of a primate, yet bearing a striking resemblance to the foot of a large alligator. This amalgamation of features only deepened the enigma surrounding the Honey Island Swamp Monster, adding layers of complexity to its already legendary status. Ford's appearance on national television catapulted the local legend of the Honey Island Swamp Monster into the spotlight, captivating a wider audience beyond the swamp's immediate vicinity. Dinah Holyfield reflected on the aftermath, noting that the region was gripped by monster mania. However, not everyone was quick to embrace Ford's account. Critics emerged from the local community, challenging Ford's credibility by suggesting that he and his companions fabricated the creature to lay claim to prime hunting grounds. Some speculated that the motive might have been boredom or a desire to stimulate the local economy through increased tourism. Holyfield recounted a particular incident where an individual allegedly attached a swamp monster track to the sole of a shoe, insinuating that Ford and his friends had orchestrated the footprints themselves during their ventures into the swamp. This controversy added a layer of skepticism to the already mysterious tale of the Honey Island Swamp Monster, leaving both believers and skeptics locked in a debate over the creature's existence and origins. Despite facing criticism and skepticism, Harlan Ford remained steadfast in his quest to uncover the truth about the Honey Island Swamp Monster. However, the backlash from the public eventually led him to retreat from the spotlight opting for a more private pursuit of the elusive creature. It wasn't until after his passing in 1980 that a significant discovery shed new light on his lifelong fascination. Ford's wife, Yvonne, stumbled upon a hidden treasure in their attic, an old 8 mm film reel containing grainy footage. The footage, dated and weathered, 
captured what appeared to be a large, hairy figure moving behind a backdrop of trees. This startling find reignited interest in Ford's research, sparking questions about the authenticity of his claims. In addition to the video, Ford's family uncovered a letter he had penned, detailing his encounters with the creature. This letter, seemingly intended for public consumption, was accompanied by plaster casts of footprints and other evidence. This discovery raised a perplexing question. If Ford had fabricated the swamp monster for attention or personal gain, why did he go to such lengths to hide the majority of his evidence? This paradox deepened the mystery surrounding Ford's motives and the authenticity of his accounts. It presented a tantalizing puzzle for those intrigued by the legend of the Honey Island Swamp Monster, leaving them to ponder the true nature of Ford's involvement in perpetuating the myth. Neil Benson, the proprietor of Pearl River Eco Tours, expressed his indifference towards whether people believe in the Honey Island Swamp Monster. He drew a comparison to beliefs in intangible things like God, emphasizing that personal experiences can be profound, regardless of external validation. Benson recounted an incident from his youth, clarifying that while he didn't claim to have seen the exact creature known as the Honey Island Swamp Monster, he did witness something akin to it. Reflecting on his teenage years, Benson recalled paddling away from his duck blind in a pyrogue when he noticed a tall figure moving in a manner unlike any creature he had encountered. He emphasized that this entity's movements through water on two legs were distinct and not characteristic of bears or humans. This first-hand experience left an indelible impression on Benson, prompting him to acknowledge the existence of something inexplicable in the swamp's depths. Benson shares his encounter with curious visitors during his swamp tours, recounting the mysterious sighting he experienced. He also keeps a plaster cast of Harlan's footprint impression, a token gifted to him by Dana Holyfield. These casts have become cherished artifacts passed around among enthusiasts and believers throughout St. Tammany Parish. One such cast is prominently displayed at the Abita Mystery House in Abita Springs, Louisiana. John Preble, the owner of the museum, draws a parallel between the Honey Island Swamp Monster and the ivory-billed woodpecker, a species presumed extinct due to lack of recent documentation. He notes that people often claim sightings of both creatures, attributing this to the vastness of the swamp and its ability to conceal elusive beings. Preble speaks highly of Dana Holyfield, describing her as authentic and compelling. Meeting her and hearing her account, he believes, lends credibility to the stories surrounding the swamp monster and similar enigmatic phenomena. Holyfield has dedicated a significant portion of her life to pursuing the same creature that captivated her grandfather's attention. Through writing books and producing documentaries, she meticulously documents encounters and lore surrounding the Honey Island Swamp. For Holyfield, this endeavor holds deep personal significance as she carries on her grandfather's legacy. She firmly believes in his account, recognizing the implications of dismissing it as mere myth. Holyfield emphasizes that acknowledging the reality of the creature is crucial, as it validates the experiences of numerous locals who have encountered similar phenomena. To dismiss it as unreal would be to discredit the perceptions and narratives of many in the area. Before Harlan Ford's encounters with the Honey Island Swamp Monster entered local lore, the swamps were already steeped in a rich tapestry of legends. Tales of the Loop Garou, a Cajun werewolf, and the mischievous Lutin ghost were whispered across the marshes for generations. These legends often drew inspiration from earlier Native American stories, particularly those of the Chitimacha and Atacapas tribes. These tribes spoke of wolf walkers, fearsome creatures with a blend of human and beastly attributes, known for their penchant for consuming humans. Despite the ominous legends, the Honey Island Swamp can appear serene and picturesque under the sunlight. The region is defined by the winding East and West Pearl Rivers, with intricate waterways weaving through lush marshes filled with diverse flora like elephant ears, water hyacinth, cypress, and willow. It's a habitat where mysterious creatures could easily go unnoticed, hidden away in the shadows and deserving of their uninterrupted existence in this untamed wilderness.